Hi, I'm Lieutenant Ben Seip, and this is Fleet Friday. Fire, what is the address of the emergency? What's on fire? Uh, uh, calls reporting planes coming from the roof. LPDs arriving on scene, stating fire in the stairwells as well. Multiple callers, complaints seen coming out of the unit. Hustle party trapped, but there's an older lady that lives there. She is in that scene. Right, medium size, two-story multi-family. We have a smoke complaint charge. Alpha side. LBS assume command. Remain the offensive strategy. We do have extension to the second floor. He's headed to the third. Let's go ahead and start a second alarm. 3, so this truck is Decon 17. It's used in conjunction typically with Hammer 38. Uh, we respond on higher level hazmat calls. So if they call for uh, a hazmat call that we think we might need to, to do decon on, this is automatically added to the run card. So engine 17 will switch over into this truck. We'll take it and typically decon um, includes our medic unit, so both the engine and the uh, medic unit will respond. The engine will take the decon vehicle and we'll, we'll head to the call to be able to assist in the hazmat uh, response. Yeah, it's for decontamination, so we use it for a, a variety of, of situations, either chemical, biological, um, those are typically the two that we will run into most. So it's set up for both. Typically, um, we would use it most often to decontaminate our people that would head downrange, either to mitigate or, or do recon to find out what's going on with the hazardous material. So usually it's just used for our people, but we are set up, the unique thing about this truck is it's set up um, so we can decon a large volume of uh, civilians as well. So we have a specialized decon tent with water heater, air heater, those things that we can use to decon uh, both us and the public. So this is a 2000, uh, 2013 um, International Cab Durastar diesel. Um, the box is 27 feet long. Uh, it's set up, we recently got the MDT set up so that really helps us in our response. But it's uh, fairly typical, um, more like a semi than a fire truck at this point. We have room for four so we can bring the whole engine engine company. Um, we typically have to move our SCBAs over if we only bring this vehicle so we have uh, air packs for decon. Um, other than that it's it's kind of standard as far as um, a, a four cab semi but uh, it works well for response. So this truck originally was purchased with funds by uh, US Department of Homeland Security back in like I said 2013. Um, it was part of a uh, um, regional hazmat approach that the Denver metro area was was a part of and South Metro was a part of then. Department? Sure, so this this compartment we carry um, the uh, water heater and the air heater both run on kerosene fuel so we carry that in an external compartment so it's it's safe and, and doesn't provide any sort of uh, potential to contaminate the uh, interior of the truck. So the back of the truck has a lift gate on it. We have um, some fairly heavy equipment that goes inside of it uh, that we, we need this gate in order to quickly and easily uh, unload it to avoid injury and, and those types of things. So. So as you can see, it's kind of open down the middle. We have it set up in a corridor style, um, just so we have access to all the equipment that's inside of it without having to move anything. Um, at the back end, as you can see here, um, this is our big um, public decon tent. This was actually the purchased along with the truck from Homeland Security. It's uh, a large tent that we can set up fairly quickly. It's, it's uh, kind of a U-shape, has um, internal supports and it's easy to set up. We can set up three full decon lines in that tent so we can decon a large 
volume of both ambulatory and non-ambulatory civilian patients. We typically would not set that up to use for um, fire department use just because we don't have that many people, but in any sort of large MCI or hazmat incident, we can use it to, uh, to decon a lot of people. So the tents at the back, and then if you look down the center, we also have the, uh, we can go inside and look at it a little bit more closely, but we have our air heater and generator and water heater to run that whole, that whole setup. Um, on this side, typically we have more of our gross fire department type decon um, arrangements. We have our, our tarp so we can have our template to set up decon quickly. We have tents and other things that we can use along with um, water appliances and stretchers and all that stuff. So. So inside we have um, both the equipment that we would use for a decon setup plus some offensive um, equipment that's used for either monitoring or mitigating hazardous materials incidents. So we have a full complement of uh, multi-array monitors on this side along with you know, just some things that we might need to either set up our hot zones or designate a working area along with the cones. Um, we have specialized lights, all that type of thing. Um, the rest of the stuff down this left hand side, um, this is our water heater that we can use. Uh, it's kerosene powered and we use it, we can heat up a large volume of water. We hook it up um, with inch and a half hose um, from a fire truck and use that water. We can heat it up and, and make it reasonably comfortable to decon uh, civilians. Next is the red, that's our generator. Our air heater is the third in the line and then the tent's the fourth. So on the top, we have the equipment that we use along with, um, with the decon setup. So we have the hoses that we would use, the orange and the bl blue are for hot and cold for the tent. And then the rest of the hoses are just used for um, regular setting up a regular decon line. In addition to that, we carry some of the larger equipment that does not fit on the hammer. Um, these appliances can be used for hot tapping and uh, draining fuel from, from like an overturned fuel tanker. We have all the bins that are set up here at this end. Um, they're set up basically pre-positioned uh, pre in order to get our techs in, into um, PPE for decon. So each one of these bins is set up with a um, set of boots, which is the size that you see, and then the rest of the items in there are listed out on the sheet of paper. Um, these are all set up so that you can pull one out and uh, dress techs individually to run the decon line fairly quickly. So we have our, our um, benches there that are set up. We'll pull those out, the tech will sit down, we'll bring a bin out. All they need to bring is their SCBA and their SCBA mask. Um, they go ahead and get dressed in, in these suits with the assistance of, a, of another operations level person and then they're all set up to uh, decon people that, that need it. So we have a bunch of those that are all pre-staged based on the size and we have additional equipment down below, um, additional gloves, batteries. We can also use, as you can see, the um, markings on those boxes say for PAPRs and those are um, powered air purifying respirators so we can use those in situations that don't require SCBA. So if we have a known contaminant, um, something that, that we're not worried about, the oxygen levels, those types of things, we can use a PAPR. And the advantage of that is that it's a little bit longer um, use. You can, you don't have to, you're not constrained by the, um, the size of the SCBA bottle. You can use it a lot longer uh, and they're lighter so we can reduce our fatigue and um, those types of things. Because one of the things that we run into is if you're in a hazmat suit for a long period of time, it's pretty easy to get dehydrated and, and overworked. So, um, In addition to these bins here, we have some, some other um, offensive equipment like our chlorine kit. Um, they're just too big to fit on the, uh, on the hammer, so we put them here on the decon ring. Um, South Metro has changed their philosophy in terms of foam recently. We're carrying more foam on specialized rigs as opposed to on our frontline engines. So um, in the last couple of weeks, actually, we just swapped out a lot of our old foam and put a, a bigger stock here on the uh, Decon 17. So we have the ability to, to use it in a, in a situation where we would need foam. Um, the philosophy is one that, that foam is, is a little bit more um, environmentally damaging and potentially can be a bigger health risk. So we want to use less of it. Um, so by having less out 
in our system, we don't have to recycle it or replace it as often. We can uh, keep a smaller stock in a centralized location, call for it when it's needed, and then that way um, we, we don't need to keep gallons and gallons and gallons around the department. We can keep less in a centralized place and still have good access to it when we need it. So um, this foam is actually um, used for typically like a hydrocarbon fire where we had, had um, hydrocarbons that might be on top of a, um, um, or I should say hydrocarbon and for polar solvent fires. So we can use it to create a foam blanket on top of a fire if, if we had one of those. So an aircraft crash, we could use it in that, that situation or, or like we said with the tanker equipment, if we had a fire issue there, we can create a foam blanket, cover that flammable liquid and, and extinguish it. Uh, we also have some absorbent. We carry quite a bit here on the hammer. Uh, I'm sorry, on the decon rig. Uh, we, we carry various booms and other equipment for um, controlling spills on waterways. Yeah, so these are absorbent booms and they can be used in a variety of, of typically waterborne applications. So um, South Metro covers both Cherry Creek and Chatfield Reservoir. Um, if we have a boat, say, that capsizes and as a result, the fuel will typically, fuel and oil will leak out of the boat. They're heavier, I'm sorry, they're lighter than water, so they'll float on top of the water. We can use these booms to, to create um, a perimeter around that floating fuel and contain it to, to one area. And then we also have absorbent pads so we can put that, those pads down and soak that fuel up to prevent um, environmental damage. Um, we also have, um, for personal decon, it's, it's called a DF200 solution and we're currently waiting on a, um, a CAVS air system that's going to deliver that. Um, so we can use it for personalized decon. It's a fantastic solution that ends up working on most of the um, chemicals and biological uh, hazards that we might encounter. So it's pretty advanced. We're kind of moving away from uh, soap and water. It's more, more um, chemically based decon, but it works really well. So um, in addition to that, we just have other devices. These nozzles are set up to deliver um, the foam that we carry on the truck. So we have several of those uh, in preparation of using that foam. Um, moving further down the line, we have stretchers for non-ambulatory patients. Um, this green um, trash can carries all the uh, water supply devices, hoses, manifolds, all the rest of that stuff that we would need to, to use for anything from a gross decon to more of a technical decon. Um, signs for our corridors. Um, and then these actually have um, suits if we were to decon a large group of the public after they get decon, we need to have something to put them in. So we carry uh, quite a few of, they're called Doffit kits or Donna kits. We allow, have clothing for people to put on when they get done. So, um, and then lastly, here is, uh, so we have some of the decon sprayers that we use. These are called hoop sprayers and they hook up just to a regular garden hose. They're really good at um, cleaning off all sides of a person. So as we set up our decon line, we'll actually have them step through. They can hold on to these walkers that we set up. Seems kind of silly to have walkers that you would see in a nursing home, but they work really well to keep, uh, help you keep your balance. So you stand there in your suit, um, you can raise your feet up and they can decon the back of your feet. And then we take these hoop sprayers and it sprays the whole, um, whole firefighter that's dressed in, in their level A or level B suit. It, they work really well to clean, get, get you totally clean. So, so these are um, overpack drums and they can be used if we have a uh, situation. Again, there's something that's too big to fit on our hammer. So we carry a couple here on the decon and they're used if we were to have a 55 gallon drum or something smaller that had a leak. Um, the best way to contain that leak is to put it in another container. So um, as the name implies, they're for overpacking. Um, another leaking drum. So we can get these out, take the tops off. We have um, two here, one with the metal ring and then the other one that's just all poly. Um, we can roll uh, a drum inside of them or place something inside of them uh, and close them up to contain a, a leaking object. So station 17, um, we are a, a hazmat station. Um, we have five personnel right now, three on the engine and two on the medic unit. And in order to bid into the station, you need to, to make a commitment to the hazmat team and pass our hazmat, the state hazmat tech um, 
test and obtain that certification within a year. So our goal is to have uh, five techs on each shift and we're still kind of working that way with people who have bid into the station, but we have a, a good group of people and, and they, in order to get that certification, they spend about 80 hours in class and then they have to pass the state test along with a, an extensive state practical.